We want to start with the uh, government clearing uh, the containers from the port. Let me get right into that story. Um, a few papers carry it as well. The Ghanaian Times says GRA clears uh, 14 out of 182 containers. Actually, we have, we have, we have it on City News Newsroom.com, but let me just read what the, the daily, uh, the Ghanaian Times, sorry, Ghanaian Times um, take on this story is. Okay, so GRA clears 14 out of 182. Uh, 82 containers locked up at the Tema port, hands over products to health ministry. Now, the Ghana Revenue Authority has handed over uh, 14 out of the 182 containers locked up uh, of locked up pharmaceutical products needed in the fight against HIV, AIDS, malaria, and tuberculosis to the Ministry of Health. Now, the essential medical commodities, including um, antiretroviral drugs for HIV patients were stuck at the Tema port for almost a year due to the government's inability to settle third-party fees. Earlier, Global Fund had threatened to suspend the shipment of crucial medical supplies to Ghana, citing delays in clearing previous donations stuck at the Tema port. Now, I'm just going to put a hold on the, the, the reading at this point. And um, let me come to you first of all, um, Minister Thompson. This issue is a bit befuddling for me in the sense that um, you've been sent a gift. You've been sent items that you didn't pay for. I don't understand the rationale in terms of the way, and maybe there is a logical explanation for this, but I don't understand the rationale in terms of you've been given a gift as a nation. We determine what we charge fees on at the port. That determination is not done by anybody but government, you know. And yet quick, somehow, yes, go ahead. Quick, let me cut you there. Okay. There is no logical explanation for this. Anybody who attempts an explanation mm. at what is happening mm. will be attempting to throw dust in the eyes of the people and to take all of us, or perhaps to play with all of us, our intelligence. But this issue, before we even get into the specifics, mm. uh, this issue brings to bear the efficiency of government's own fiscal policies and how self-destructive our fiscal, our fiscal regime is. You know, in Akan, we say, <clears throat> if you cut your tank and chew, mm. you haven't chewed any meat. meat. This is simple logic. There are so many things that are being impacted on negatively because of the stringent fiscal regimes at our ports, especially at our ports. It looks as if government has been so inefficient in other areas of revenue mobilization that it has put in all its hope on port generated revenues. Now, this, also, this issue also brings to bear our issue of prioritization and, and the thinking and the decision-making process that goes into the grant of tax exemptions to certain companies. And I'll, I'll, I'll deal with it very, very, because it's a very, very serious issue. So I'll start from the issue. You've received medical donations, mm -hmm. not donated to a private person or a private hospital, even if it was a private hospital. There's a way the private entity or hospital, if it can prove that these medicines are not going into a profit-making venture, yeah. could talk to government <coughs> and say, look, 
I've received these mm. sort of medications mm. or assistance, and I need assistance from government to clear to use for the benefit yeah. of the people, yeah. even if it was a private entity. Mm. How much more government itself receiving medication and go government is telling government to come and pay tax to government before government can get the medicine of government. Yeah, it's, it's mind-boggling. How, I mean, how insane can anybody be? And to think that the medicines have been confiscated, they are there at the port, cannot go out and be used to serve the purpose. People are languishing, waiting on these medications. And government's excuse to these people who are dying is that it is waiting for government to pay taxes on the, on the medicines it has received to government. Hmm. That, is the, that is the insanity, you know, you, you know we're experiencing currently. It is the same rationale. When that, that, that was extended to Kumase, the Confanoti Teaching Hospital project, mm. dilapidated facility. Your two four says, look, government, I know you're overwhelmed. Yeah. I'm going to put my people together and mobilize resources to refurbish the hospital. Go around, try to collect money, small, 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 small from here, small from here, small from here. Then, they import medical equipment. Other people donate medical equipment also. The medical equipment arrived at the port. Mm. And government is saying that, come and pay tax to me, government, <laughs> eh? to collect your equipment, to go and refurbish a facility I was supposed to refurbish. You see that? You see, so when people say this country is a thinking problem that we have, you know, I don't doubt them. This is a practical thinking problem. It is just insense. It is just common sense. A lack of common sense. That so the question, the critical question one must ask is: So when government heard that the O two four was raising funds to refurbish mm. the hospital, what steps did it take? Or ha has it relinquished that responsibility to, to the Otunfo? So nobody in government went to the Otunfo and said, Nana, we've seen that you, you're mobilizing resources to refurbish our biggest regional hospital. And for emphasis sake, the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital doesn't serve only the people of Ashanti. Mm. It, serve, it is the major referral center for the Southern Belt it's, so, and the Middle Belt. So from from Techiman all up to Kumase and its areas, Western region, all of them, they are middle referral centers from Fanoji Teaching Hospital. Mm, mm. Serving the entire middle belt of Ghana. So when they started those projects, so nobody, no sensible person in this government went to the Tunfu and said, Nana, how can we help? And Nana will say, oh, okay, um, we've been able to mobilize these resources. We have some medical equipment. Oh, the only assistance we require from government is to help us get these medicines from the port without any incumbencies. Nobody did that. <laughs> and the goods arrived. And people were bold enough to tell the two for come and pay, come and pay duty to collect your medical equipment to go and refurbish a hospital belonging to government. I mean, I, I mean, how lame can we all be? And could you, in this, could you, Koku, sorry. In the midst of all these quagmires, in the 2024 budget, almost 500 million to 600 million worth of tax incentives have been given to businesses, building hotels, mm. all manner of ventures. So the critical question is, Koku, what is the criteria for deciding which c companies and which organizations receive tax incentives in a year?
So we've made the tax incentives, you know, a political slash fund. You say you need revenue. Yeah. And so even people bringing medical equipment, mm. agricultural inputs, must pay taxes to you. Then you grant tax exemptions worth millions of cities to your cronies to build hotels, to build, you, you know, uh, uh, why? Why? So, I mean, this issue goes to the crust of the thinking problem we have in this country and the lack of accountability and it must inside the conversation. We must institute an independent committee of parliament. Either the finance committee coupled with the other committees to decide which agencies deserves to be given tax incentives every year. So, so every year, if government is capable of granting, let's say, 100 million worth of tax incentives, yeah. that government should, should only state that this year in the budget, I can give 100 million see this worth of tax incentives. Mm, mm. That must not be at the discretion of the executive. Parliament must decide. Yeah. There must be a forum where businesses can, must apply so, so that entities such as these, mm. people doing benevolent, you know, community projects, things that benefit the ordinary Ghanaians such as this, will not be seized at the port, but they could apply to those independent committees and receive tax holidays. Yeah. And we still tax incentives right. from the government. Mm. And we should please, 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 <gasps> government. It is an insult for the government to come and tell us that out of over 100 medicines, it has been able to clear only 14. After how, after how long? It's an insult to all of us. Only 14? Well, I mean, they're, 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 a, they're saying that they will clear the rest in the next few days. So. <laughs> but... but let me let me go to let me go to um, Kaputi. Here's the thing, Kaputi. So a, last year, there was a case in Tamale where, and I'm just going to read portions of the story because we, we can read the whole thing. Northern Region. This is on CityNewsroom.com. So Northern Region NDC demands transparency in the auction of 400 million, sorry, 400 thousand dollars worth of medical supplies. Now let me just say, so. There's um, the chief, chief Zosimili Zos Na um, procured some medical equipment. Now, there's a relationship between Tamale and Louisville in the U.S. Okay, city, city, two city, you know, relationship. And because of that relationship, there was access to do this procurement. And they got equipment sent to Ghana. Now, here's the thing. The story says here... Um, let me just go to this part. Yeah, so I, I quote here. The medical supplies worth over 400,000 US dollars were shipped from the United States of America with the intention of aiding hospitals in the northern region, particularly the Tamale Teaching Hospital, Central Hospital, and other hospitals were unlawfully auctioned by the Tema Port Authorities. These medical supplies include, listen to this all, oxygen tanks, dialysis machines, machines. So I'm emphasizing on the dialysis machines because of the issues that we've been through. And incubators were in, in, intended to enhance healthcare services in the northern region. Now the supplies arrived in September 2022 and you were auctioned in June 2023 simply because the taxes and the levies on clearing Product, these things were prohibitive. And so they couldn't pay, they couldn't pay, they couldn't pay, they decided they're going to auction the things off. This is just to give extra context to where we are. If, if what you just read mm. is not heartlessness, thiefery, and senselessness, then no word. And I'm not saying excuse me, because you should be that heartless. You should be, you should be very wicked and let me use this word not carefully this time around. <laughs> you should be very stupid. Okay. And when, when I use the word stupid, I'll tell you why. If you put me behind a plane to pilot it, mm. I'll be stupefied. I'll have no clue. I'll be clueless. 
okay? I mean, no training, you put me. So if you see a situation where you've put at the, at the ports, mm. there are goods that should be exempted. Mm. Things by civil society organizations or NGOs that they are not going, not for profit mm. initiatives. Mm. There should be also the need to receive it when it's an emergency. You are talking about Ghana. If you've forgotten, this is Ghana. Mm. The country that sat down did not procure these dialysis machines, and 13 people died. But you see, don't be surprised. Those who are in the helms of affairs will get support from our taxes and seek medical care outside. Mm. That is the worst decision we took as Ghanaians, to allow the person in charge who messes up to go outside and seek medical care. You see, when you have a military person in charge, <laughs> when you have a military person in charge, then they go like, um, he's using Buga Buga or Tofan. No, no, no. They are only smart. Because, you see, you will not see a military leader allowing you to go outside if he's in the right uniform sense. Because we have to make it happen here. That's why some people, you see civilians jubilating when the military people took over in other countries. In those countries, When yeah. they were mismanaging. Yeah. This, this was the, 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 the nonsense. The, the nonsense. There was no sense in allowing drugs. I mean, for it to sit down, for Demore to actually come in, is where your, 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 your heartlessness comes in. Look, about 23 years ago, a lecturer stood in front of me and told me that health is not a mere absence of diseases and illnesses, mm. but a state of, di of, 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 of complete psychological, physical, spiritual, and social well-being. Can you imagine the psychological state of these patients who are sitting down anxiously waiting to have access? Like my brother explained some time ago that, look, not all of the people who have HIV AIDS, some were on, even on the line of duty, mm -hmm. serving their country and humanity, and got this HIV AIDS. And they are sitting back. Some of them, their salary is not to talk about. Mm. They are sitting back waiting for these drugs. This drug that you didn't buy, yeah. that you didn't pay air tickets for, mm. it was airlifted. You see, if Ghana was supposed to go to the nearest uh, deposit point, like maybe in Senegal or Nigeria and go and bring it, they deposited it at your port, <laughs> at the thermal port, where the, some people are getting to clear their things with protocol. The, com uh, the, the company should just take their medicines away. Just take their medicines away. The government is not interested. You see, and what the patients and their, you know, and their families are going through is another uh, a trauma at all to talk about. Now, what are the issues? The Presidential AIDS Commission has delayed and failed totally. I served on the, the AIDS Commission board. It's a presidential board. It is a presidential board. And you know who and who are serving? The, the vice president usually chairs for the president. Mm -hmm. The health minister is on board. Okay. And the Minister of Finance is on board. Okay. So, I mean, the people who care about this matter, who, who, who this matter rubs on, they are all on that Presidential AIDS Commission board. Go and bring the list and you see. They are on the board. So they failed. Look, government grants exemptions to their transactions of interest. We were here, even a company that was sitting there somewhere, were granted an exemption of one million Ghana cities. Mm. And they said, look, when the issues blow, blah, 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 I mean, was in public domain, then we heard them say, no, they didn't apply for any exemption. Those who have not even applied for. You are giving them. And the people are sitting down waiting for ARVs, and it is there. Why, why are you surprised? I'm not surprised. This ARV thing, I told you, I witnessed it in 2005, when there was no center for, for actually the, the, doling out the drug to people at the northern, the three northern regions. Yeah. Okay, so it's not news. Yours truly, the humble you nukes representative, I stood up and told the vice president at the time, may he so rest in peace, Elijah Liu Mahama. And he was panicked because he was sitting there cheering, mm. you know, and, and he was from the three from the northern region. And there was no center there. They had to come all the way to Kumasi yeah. to, to actually assess the drugs. So it's not news. Their problems, it is a thinking problem. We were not thinking in 2005 and we are still not thinking. Hmm. That's a problem. And you see, the gross ungratefulness that we have shown to the people who actually, the low interest that we've shown to those who are donating it. Your children were hungry. I brought rice to you. Cook for them. I came back, and the issue is that, look, the charcoal that is there is meant for palm soup. 
<laughs> so come and pay me money. Come and pay me money so I'll use that charcoal to cook the rice to them. eat myself. <laughs> what sort of what sort of thinking? <laughs> what sort of thinking is this? Is it a case? On a boy, are you going to say Beshi? Meaning Beshi Pony, a cow on a tafla. This is water. I take you to the riverside, fetch water and drink. You prefer another cup. I should go and bring another cup before you drink. Where? When is you that needs to drink? You Look, are the thirsty one. If you were picturing the group called Ghanaians and you were watching a movie, you see a group of confused people. You just see a group of confused people. Those who think they are smart are the less smartest of all. There are those who have gone through the vetting, have the certificates, are sitting down on the presidential board. And ARV is sitting down at the ports. They are heartless enough. Right now, there's a meeting going on somewhere, I'm sure, that is discussing another uh, exemptions to another company. Because that document that spelled out that $449 million should be doled out to Ghanaian companies, they call uh, one district, one factory, will be going on while this one that was doled you to you free will be yeah. sitting there. Again, look, this thinking problem is just there. Is I mean, carefree attitude because their salaries will come anyway. After all the mess up, their salary will be there, the allowances will be there. When they are sick, they will travel in the plane and go there and assess the healthcare. I'm telling you because way back, seven on the board, there was, uh, there was a time when Professor Sai said, we all should be in in interested in staying here and making it happen because some people even, you know some people, some of those top officials, they are, sh they, they are shy because of a stigma around the HIV and AIDS. So they go to, especially South Africa, a lot of them go to South Africa to assess the ARV drought. We know. And look, the, 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 because there's no direct effect on the, the, the duty bearers, I mean, it's a matter of who feels it knows. Who feels yeah. it knows? Yeah. I mean, what is the way forward? Government should show will and commitment and deliver. It's a, this is a matter of, you don't need to deal with documents. Too. It's a phone call away. Yeah. It's a phone call. You know, it's interesting. I mean, you are, you are, and have advocated for a long time for revenue mobilization. Right. And um, the argument that they would make is that we need revenue. Now, juxtapose that to the millions that are being given in terms of exemptions, which you've also advocated against. There are a lot of exemptions. Coco, we should stop doing Before that. you come in, let yeah. me read this story on, uh, on uh, Ghana Web. Okay. Ekufado gives his in-law uh, 136.7 billion tax exemption, Ghana cities. At a time, at a time where Ghanaians are, 26 billion. At a time where Ghanaians are compared to pay more taxes to this government, President Kufat has offered a tax exemption of 23 million, 983,033 million dollars, 23 million dollars to a company called Platinum Properties Limited to put up a hotel facility in Accra. The PPL is a special purpose vehicle owned and controlled by inter Africa Holdings Limited, set up to put up a hotel facility called the Pullman Accra Airport City ah, Hotel. Okay. That so, works. so this is twenty-three million dollars of tax exemption given to a so-called president's brother-in-law to build a hotel at the center of Accra. Then the Ghanaians who pay the taxes have medicines, medical equipments come at the port. The president says, go and find money to come and pay me before you can get the medicine. Do two or four want to refurbish your own hospital for the people of the middle belt. Medical equipment arrive. He says, no, I have given all the tax exemption to my brother-in-law to build a hotel. Nothing for you. Go and find money and come and give it to me before I can give you medical equipment. This, these are some of the mm. things mm. that cause civil uprising in other countries. These are some of the things that cause riots. You know, these are some of the things that angers people, that make people do the unthinkable. Because you, I mean, the, in any country, today people will be on the streets. This is just unthinkable. That we cannot, we cannot, for in God's name, in the name of health, people yeah. dying. <clears throat> People and and you know these medicines mm. are the people are dependent. Yes, their lives depend mm. on these medicines yes. to survive. Yes, how cruel can we so, be? Okay. So quickly, I mean, 
There's also the case of the poor interagency and, and ministerial collaboration mm. because this thing should be between the Ministry of Health, Ministry of Finance, and they should have actually, I mean, if even it's a debt, you leave it on the head of the Ministry of Health for now. Yeah. If government is delaying yeah. in paying that money. Yeah. So quickly, as, as a debt form of a thing, you know, write it on their, on their books, mm. let, let the drugs go and do the important thing. That's a health It's not as if they don't do it with Exactly. Other so, so write it off. And, and, and there are companies who owe, yeah. uh, you know, I'm sure, GRE and the rest. Mm. So quickly, let us run it through and let the medicines go. And then the ministerial discussions can go on. Next one is the low and limited action on, on the part of CSOs and citizens. We sat back and watched. And so, you see, when you sit back and watch when, when one goes on, two goes on, and three, and a thousand will go on, let's repair the diplomatic damage and the, and the image shutdown that we've caused. I mean, everybody else... Yeah, because Global Ghana. Fund has uh, said uh, that they're not saying Yes, anymore. they are being even gentle with yeah. Ghana, knowing that the way Ghana is held in high esteem, they are just being gentle with us. The, and we also need to improve the ministerial and, you know, and then agency relations. I said, let's cancel all states-funded health supports that are given to state officials. Let's cancel all. And I repeat, with all due respect, let's all stay in here and die in here. <laughs> and I, no, no, I'm, I'm serious. Or otherwise, let us all stay so in here. All... You see, when we all stay in here and it affects everybody, mm. somebody will think. And fix you it. see, when there's a protocol that he will sit in a plane, yeah. nobody should go out there. Let us all stay in here. And, and, and if we have to die, let's all die in here. All right. Just like we did during Corona. Yeah. In Corona time, you see, when they didn't, let me, let me nail this one well. In Corona time, when it happened that wherever they are going, there was a problem, mm -hmm. they were so interested. The UGMC that was left there, sitting there, the they fixed it in just a few, they commissioned and fixed it with gross alacrity. <laughs> with gross alacrity. It is important when it affects them. Who feels it knows and who feels it is concerned. Look, let's make logical reasoning. Yeah. Mm. A very serious com uh, com compact of education in Ghana. Mm. Logical reasoning. Yeah. It should be a compulsory course from primary school to university. Because when you look at this, and you, you sit down well, we are okay. matching, people are matching bottle, <laughs> bottle to shoe. <laughs> but when people can match chair, eh, chair to mm. table, mm. and they can match pen to paper, mm. they won't do this. Thank you. Yeah. All right.